Hey guys, it's Mark from Erickson Machine and Performance. This is going to be the first video in a series going through porting. This one's going to be basically going through all the different tooling you need to be able to go through this series with me. If you guys like these videos, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit us up in the comments section, let us know what you think about them. Let me know what you guys want in videos, I'd be happy to make them for you guys. So we now have some stickers, so they're on our Facebook page if you want to go buy some. Be greatly appreciated to help the channel out. We bought a new camera, got some new microphones. I'm still trying to learn how to use all this stuff. I'm an engine builder, not a videographer. I don't really know anything about microphones, cameras, anything like that. So I'm learning as I go. So please bear with me in the process. So this series is going to go through basic rec porting not going to go too serious in the first ones we might do some more in depth later there's going to be a video later on where we build a flow bench and show you the differences you know engines are basically air pumps so showing you when you grind out of here the differences you get over there basically so the first engine in the series is going to be a yamaha 701 we're going to do the cylinder, we're going to do the cases, I'm going to walk you through how to epoxy fill the cases correctly, how to port the cylinder correctly, the different machine work, so on and so forth. Then we'll end up doing a Kawasaki 650, Kawasaki 750, Kawasaki 1100, and then either a Yamaha 1100 or 1200, depending on what you guys tell me you want. So going through this video, you end up needing some grinders. So the cheapest way to do it is to go with some air tools. So the cheapest way to go around about it is, you know, when you're talking about the right angle tool. So this is an Ampro. This is a Blue Point. This one's 180 bucks. This is, you know, almost 400. They're the same exact tool. The only difference is the warranty. The nice thing with these is you can get a three mil or a one eighth collet which is great. When you end up buying birds, you'll notice there's three mil and eighth inch and they don't fit each other. So you need individual collets for them. So getting a grinder that you can get both is really nice. Now eBay sells an orange one of these. It's like $60. It's only three millimeter, but if you're just getting into it, it's a really good option and it doesn't break the bank. So with air then there's what's called a pen grinder so this is also eighth inch or three millimeter depending on what collet you get for it works great you can get them for you know 50 bucks around that so you can really get an eighth inch pen grinder the eighth inch angle grinder and then you know a standard quarter inch die grinder for you know under 150 bucks by far the cheapest route to go what I recommend though on all air tools is end up putting one of the adjustable flow valves on it um, because with some of the different sanding mandrels, if you go too fast, you'll actually bend the mandrel and some of the mandrels can actually get pretty expensive. So from there, if you want to go away from air, you can go to electric. So the cheapest electric really ends up being the Dremel. Um, I recommend if you're going to go this route get the Dremel 4000 which is this one and then make sure that you end up doing the shaft grinder extension kit that they sell for it if you use the shaft kit on it these things really last a long time because the shaft puts flex in the system and you don't beat the grinder up as much if you don't one it's really hard to get into the areas you need and two you'll wear out the grinder extremely quickly so I recommend doing that if you go that route and the last method which also happens to be the most expensive method is a Fordham or you know a standard shaft grinder setup this setup's great because the SR motor that I use is reversible so you can go forward backward with certain right angle tooling that's beneficial because the tools have a tendency to jump 
nice thing with my setup is I have this Fordham rack. It's really nice. I have a whole bunch of different hand pieces to make it go quicker while I'm porting customer cylinders. So each one of these you buy individually holds six different hand pieces. So it's nice because you can pull them in, grab what you want, put it back in and move it out of the way. They also make different burr holders, which hold, you know, a hundred different burrs of all different sizes, which work out really great. So these are by far the best because when you're doing electric, um, you end up being able to use RPM anywhere you want it. It could be very slow. It could be very fast and you have the power everywhere. And when you're inside a port on a right angle, that's being able to control that speed really makes your job a lot easier. And also with this one where it's reversible, you can end up getting left hand and right cut burrs. So when you're grinding in a port, which I'll show you in the next video, the burr has a tendency to jump. So being able to reverse it to get it to jump in the direction you want makes it much easier to do each side of the transfers. So on these grinders, you know, the motor ends up being you know, between 250 and 400, depending on what motor you get and what foot pedal and speed control you have. I have a speed control, which is, let's see if you can see it, this unit here with a foot pedal so I can control the speed exactly how I want it. Then there's a few different hand pieces that I use for the straight hand pieces. I have the standard, which is the 44. Um, this is the 28, which is the same as the 44, but only for um, eighth inch or three millimeter. This is for quarter inch, three millimeter, eighth inch, and I believe even 332nd, the larger one. And then this one is an 08, which is even smaller than that, and it's got what's called a duplex spring. So it makes it very easy to, you know, really get inside of a port and get in there for the tiny stuff. Um, so these are around a hundred bucks and each one of these are around sixty, seventy dollars. Then when you go into the right angle tooling with this stuff, it's kind of where it gets expensive. There's a few different routes. So Fordham made an older style, which is similar to a dental tool. You can normally pick them up on eBay for, you know, $150. They work fine. You have to be very careful with them because the gear train in them isn't all that strong, so you can't really hog out with them. Then CC Specialties sells their own. Also, I think it's called the Mold Shop. They sell them as well. So this tool is the smaller. It's you know around $350 or $360, and the larger, heavier duty one is around $500. Um, these things, the only benefit to them is you buy them once and they really last you a lifetime as long as you take care of them. So that gives you a general idea on the different grinders you'd use. Now on to burrs. So there's a few different things that you'll use for grinding. So you'll use carbide burrs. You'll also use diamond burrs, sanding discs, some people use sanding stones. I personally don't. Um, and then you'll end up having sanding rolls, sanding drums, and scotch bright buffs. Each one of these things has their own thing. I don't know if you can see here. Um, I literally have hundreds of different burrs of all different sizes for, for different jobs. Um, and by having a whole bunch of different sizes, it, it makes doing what you're doing significantly easier because certain angles help you get into certain places easier, which is something you'll learn as you go. What I recommend to people if you're going to buy this stuff, don't go out and spend a couple hundred dollars on really, really expensive high-end sets. Buy some cheap ones on Amazon or eBay because while you're learning, you're going to bend them and destroy them. Better bend a $20 set than a $120 set. Um, you know, you can normally pick up. So there's a few different style carbide burrs that are common. So there's quarter inch. So you end up having quarter, uh, sorry, eighth inch with quarter inch burr. 
or eighth inch with an eighth inch burr. So, see if you guys can see the two different. So this is the larger, that's the smaller. So the larger one, you can normally get a set of 10 for around 20 or 30 bucks. The smaller one, you get a set of 20 for around the same amount of money. So I re recommend getting one of each and then getting a set of double cut quarter inch carbide burrs with, you know, a three eighth head on it for doing your roughing on your cases and that type of thing. Now they also do have burrs specifically meant for aluminum where they have a very, very aggressive tooth pattern. Um, the flutes really, really grab. Only for aluminum though, you'll destroy them. I really only use them for cases because they remove a lot of meat. After that, you end up going to your different diamond burrs. These I really recommend for people starting out because the nice thing with them, considering there's not a flute and it's just diamond, it's very easy to have a consistent cut without it bouncing all over the place. And because you're not removing a ton of metal, you can't really make that big of a mistake. So although it takes longer, it's one of the best ways to learn. Onto that, then you end up having different sanding rolls and discs, which you can have, you know, long mandrels, short mandrels, medium mandrels, and then all different grits and sizes. So I don't know if you guys can see here, there's all different trays stacked up with all different sizes. So they come in different lengths, different sizes, different grits. So start off with, I normally tell people start off with some, you know, 60 grit and 220 grit. So you can rough it out and then do the finishing on it. Um, they come in straight and tapered. You know, sometimes it's easiest to buy a porting kit, which got a whole bunch of different ones and see which ones works for you because there's really no wrong answer. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. And then lastly with that stuff ends up being Scotch-Brite buffs. So these are very expensive, but when it comes to finishing exhaust port, there's nothing that does a better job. So those are really used for just finishing the port at the very, very end. So that gives you an idea on general tooling that you'll need. Um, lighting is extremely important. So one thing, I use a headlamp. So this I picked up on Amazon, like 20 bucks, it works great. You can really get light where you need it. Does the trick also, it's hard to see in this video, but I have LED lights here. I have an LED lamp here, an LED lamp here, and then one right above me. So lighting, being able to see what you're working on is extremely important. So it's a necessity. And then lastly, it's marking what you want to port and then being able to measure it. So the main thing that most people use is Dicom. It comes in a few different colors. I use red and blue. So you just take it, paint it on, and let it harden and then you can scribe on it. There's a few different methods of scribing. So this is an adjustable scribe, so there's a step that you can measure, get it exactly where you want it, lock it down, and then go in the cylinder and, and scribe at that height. If, if you don't want to do that, they have different squares that you can use, so you can set the square and then use a standard scribe and, and scribe where you want with the square to get the measurement. Also works great. And the last method, which I don't personally use, but some builders do, is it's a piston ring. So they'll take an old piston ring, they'll set it in, they'll use a caliper to get the depth that they want, and then they will either scribe that, or I know some people actually take a drop of super glue and glue it in place so they have a solid ledge to work on. As I said before, there's really not a right or wrong answer. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. Go with that. 
what I tell people is port the cylinder first and then have it bored and honed last. While you're doing this, the cutter can jump around and beat up the cylinder, then you end up having a finished cylinder with you know grind marks all over it. It's much better to port it first or port it very close first, then have the machine work done and then do just a little finish porting and chamfering the ports at the very, very end. But as I said before, it's really whatever your preference is and whatever works best for you. The, the last method is that I know of, I'm sure there's a million more, is you end up taking a piece of paper or cardboard, you scribe out on it or draw out on it exactly the shape of the port you want, and then you can take that and feed, you know, cut it out with a razor blade so you get the shape and feed it in the cylinder, and then scribe out the shape and then go off of that. As I said, really, no wrong method to it it's whatever works best for you so hope you guys liked the video please as i said before subscribe to the channel share the video show people this stuff i want to grow the channel i've got some really neat ideas to come in the future and i need your guys help to do it so hope you guys like the video can't wait to show you the next one which we're going to finally start grinding on some cylinders and making some horsepower all right guys you have a good evening thanks again